Beware of the vast, sandy world where whispers of an ancient, mighty empire linger, the Akkadian Empire. It sprang from the shadows of the past, like a wild storm. This powerful kingdom left a deep mark on Mesopotamia, a land known for its smart thinkers and big dreams. Here's the story of Sargon the Great, a man who started with nothing and built a huge empire. The Akkadians, hungry for more land and power, changed the fate of many cities and kingdoms. Their story isn't just written on old stones, it's a part of history itself. Come with us on a journey back in time. We'll explore how this empire shone brightly, like a star, before disappearing into the mystery of history. Its rise and fall are still a wonder to us all. Akkad, the heart of this empire from 2334 to 2218 BCE, was the first big empire in the world. Sargon the Great, its founder, ruled from 2334 to 2279 BCE. He brought Mesopotamia together and set a standard for future rulers. The Akkadians started many things that later became normal, but the story of Akkad is like a puzzle. Where exactly was it? Some say it was by the Euphrates River between certain cities. The legendary King Sargon started it, uniting Mesopotamia and creating a model for future leaders. His empire was huge, reaching from the Persian Gulf to parts of what are now Kuwait, Iraq, Jordan, Syria, and maybe even Lebanon, parts of Turkey, the Mediterranean, Cyprus, and possibly Crete. Much of what we know about Sargon comes from stories passed down for over 2,000 years. We don't have much from his own time because his city, Akkad, is still lost to us. After Sargon's dynasty ended, Akkad was destroyed and forgotten. Legend has it that Sargon had a simple start. He was found as a baby in a basket on a river by a gardener. We don't know who his father was, and his mother might have been a priestess. He worked his way up without powerful friends, eventually becoming the cupbearer to the ruler of Kish. Sargon's big moment came when he defeated Lugalzagisi of Uruk. This victory made him the ruler of southern Mesopotamia. He was the first big leader who grew up speaking the Akkadian language. Sargon fought many battles to keep control. He may have called himself Shurikin, or rightful king, to show he deserved to rule, even though he didn't inherit his position. Even with these stories, there's a lot we don't know. Sargon was driven by his wish to connect with the whole world through trade. He conquered lands far and wide, reaching into Syria and southern Anatolia, and even taking over Susa and Elam in western Iran. Sargon was so famous that even faraway traders in a Turkish city asked for his help in settling a local problem. Sargon, along with his brave warriors, went on an incredible journey to a mysterious city called Burushanda. His presence alone was enough to solve their dispute. Sargon was a smart military leader and good at organizing things. He built strong trade connections thanks to the cities he conquered and their existing trade routes. His empire traded with places as far away as India, Oman, the Persian Gulf, Lebanon, the Taurus Mountains, Cappadocia, Crete, and maybe even Greece. During Sargon's time, they started using the Akkadian language on clay tablets. These tablets showed beautiful art, like mythological stories and celebrations. This change in art was probably influenced by Sargon's new capital city, showing they cared about art and not just war and money. It's hard to know exactly when Sargon ruled because there aren't many old records. We think he lived around 2334 BCE and ruled for 56 years. Sargon's empire was huge, showing his military strength and big dreams. He took over many cities in places like the Euphrates River and northern Syria. He even controlled the silver-rich mountains in southern Anatolia, making his empire stronger and richer. Sargon also conquered Susa, an important city in Iran. This showed he could take over different types of places and rule them well. There's a fascinating story about Sargon's empire. Some merchants from Anatolia, probably in Turkey, asked Sargon to help with a problem in their city. Sargon and his warriors traveled to a city called Burushanda, which is still a mystery today. This story shows how Sargon's empire was respected even in places he didn't directly control. Sargon's empire was great at trading. They did more than just conquer places. They made the economy grow and connected with many regions. They traded with India, Oman, the Persian Gulf, and even distant lands like Cappadocia, Crete, 
and maybe Greece. This helped cultures mix and goods move around, creating a big market. The Akkadian Empire also made important laws. They weren't as famous as Hammurabi's laws, but they were still important. The Code of Urnamu is one of the oldest law codes we know. It was made around 2100 BCE and covered many things like property, marriage, and business. It even had rules against false accusations and selling bad goods. This code was a big step in making laws to help society work better. It showed the Akkadian Empire's commitment to fairness and order. After Sargon died, his son Remus became king. Remus had to fight rebellions and even won a big battle in Elam. His rule was short though, only nine years. Then his brother Manishtusu took over. There's a mystery about how Remus died. Some think Manishtusu might have been involved. Manishtusu also faced rebellions. He worked on trade and building projects, like a beautiful temple in Nippur. He made changes to how land was shared. A stone in the Louvre Museum in Paris talks about his land rules. His death is also a mystery. Some think people in his court might have killed him. After Manish Tusu, his son Naram Sin became king. He had to deal with more rebellions but eventually brought peace and prosperity. He expanded the empire and led successful military campaigns. His 36-year rule was a golden time for the empire. The Victory Stele of Naram Sin, located in the Louvre Museum, is a huge stone monument that celebrates King Naram Sin's big win over Satuni, the king of the Lulubi people from the Zagros Mountains. The stele shows a powerful image of Naram Sin climbing a mountain, stepping over his defeated enemies, and looking like a god. He even called himself the king of the whole world, and dared to write his name with a symbol showing he was as important as the gods in the Mesopotamian religion. Despite his famous rule, which was the best time for the Akkadian Empire, later people blamed him for the curse of Akkad. This curse is part of old Mesopotamian stories, and it tells about what happens when you anger the gods. The story is about Naram Sin, who made the god Enlil mad. Enlil stopped protecting the city of Akkad and wouldn't let other gods bless it. Naram Sin tried hard to understand why Enlil was upset. He prayed, looked for signs, and felt sad for seven years. Tired of waiting, he gathered his army and attacked the Ekur temple in Nippur, destroying it. The story describes how Naram Sin's actions ruined the temple, comparing it to a wounded soldier. His bold move made Enlil and the other gods very angry. They sent the Guti, a wild and rough group of people, to destroy Akkad. The city faced terrible hunger, death, and destruction because of one ruler's pride. But history doesn't really show that Naram Sin attacked the temple in Nippur. The curse of Akkad story might have been made up later, as a warning about keeping a good balance between gods and kings. The story probably used Akkad and Naram Sin because they were already famous. After Naram Sin, his son Shar Kali Shari became king. The Akkadian Empire, with all its amazing achievements, faced many problems that led to its end. Managing its huge, diverse empire was really tough. The empire had lots of different cultures, languages, and ways of doing things, which made it hard to keep control and loyalty. Governing such a big area was complicated and stretched the empire's resources thin. Also, the empire grew too fast. They conquered a lot of places quickly, but couldn't always handle the new areas properly. This sometimes led to resistance and unhappiness among the people they conquered. The Akkadian Empire faced big economic problems because bad weather and changes in the environment hurt farming. This led to less food and money and made life hard for farmers and herders. Then, the Gutians, mountain invaders, attacked the weak empire. They ignored farming and safety, causing hunger and more trouble. The empire's army was too weak to stop them. There were also political issues. Fights over water, crucial for farming and living, caused conflicts and weakened the empire. Even though the Akkadian Empire didn't last long, it greatly influenced later empires and cultures in Mesopotamia. Its language, Akkadian, became widely used for government and business, helping different cultures talk and share ideas. Later empires like the Assyrians and Babylonians used the Akkadian way of ruling and managing people. The empire also left its mark on art and culture. In Agade, their capital, different artistic styles blended to create a unique Akkadian art style. This influence was seen in how later Mesopotamian art depicted kings. 
The trade networks the Akkadians set up continued and improved, connecting civilizations and moving goods from the Indus Valley to the Mediterranean. Even after the empire ended, its stories and legends, especially about Sargon the Great, continued to inspire people. Your support encourages me to keep providing more content. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and